Alright, so another new device to look at, the Vaporesso Swag PX80. So this is kind of the, the hot new thing from Vaporesso, I know they're, they're pushing it pretty hard on their um, website and advertising and all that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, I, I mean I like it, look at it, it's cool. I think this is a really um, mature kind of design from Vaporesso, it's not, you know, flashy different colours and rainbow stuff going on, it's, um, you know, we got the, the lovely sort of metal finish, carbon fibre on one side, different, I mean it's not leather, it's going to be fake leather, but um, different leather finish, um, different colours I mean you can get. So what's tricky about this mod, uh, the features that I think are pretty cool, I'm not sure you're going to be able to see this, oh barely, okay so this, it's basically it's got a hidden screen. So this just looks like solid carbon fiber until you tap the fire button and the screen suddenly appears. And um, you definitely wouldn't see that until it's on, which is really cool. That's an interesting little effect they've done. The other thing is the tank. So the tank's magnetic base. It's just a drop-in kind of deal. Um, not sure how I feel about that. It is cool that it just, just pops in and it's got the integrated airflow and it's a nice looking little tank and it does suit the device well so it uses the GTX coils which means you can use a coil that's quite suitable for a single 18650 which is obviously what this device is there's your little single 18650 just like a Pico style if you remember the old um, uh, E-Leaf iStick Pico with the cap where the, the battery is slightly longer than the actual size of the device um, so the GTX coils with this tank will suit, you know, you've got the wattage ranges because they've got quite a few GTX coils, you've got the wattage ranges to suit that single single cell quite nicely and um, I've got this running at 50 watts um, which is kind of the upper limit for good good life on an 18650 you know, you can go to a lower wattage coil, there's plenty available um, but, so, I mean, apart from not being able to change your tank and putting a, a normal 510 you know, uh, whatever, RDA or, or something with um, uh, pre-built coils, you, you can't do that on this device. So this setup's all part and parcel. They've, they've got to work with each other. That's their, um, that's the system. Which is, I mean, that's okay. As I was saying, I think they're well matched, obviously. But one thing I don't like about this tank is the, um, the fill method. So popping it off is not a big deal because it's magnetic, but that means you've got a rubber plug there to fill. And I mean rubber plugs uh, just never get along well with them because like, I mean you, you've got to open up with your finger, It's there's liquid everywhere. And I'm just going to grab a juice bottle and show you what I mean. Because obviously the tank's sitting up that way. Liquid's sitting down around near the plug. And you go to flip it over and you pull that out and sometimes there's liquid just it's basically air locking itself so the liquid's all just across this this hole and it doesn't want to run back out it just wants to sit there so if you go to try to fill it it's not going to go in because it's it's airlocked there's nowhere for it to go and you've got to kind of move the tank around a little bit until that liquid eventually like runs down and you know, form a little bubble and then the bubble will pop and then you can actually put liquid in there. So that, that's been a bit of a pain. As far as actual performance of the tank, yeah, it's great. It's fine. Um, I, you know, like, as good as any other small atomizer that size, I think, for a direct lung. The flavor's been really good. The G GTX coils are, are quite good. You know, saying they're, um, there's a lot of different models of GTX coils, so you can kind of pick which one you want. Uh, so yeah, it's good flexibility, but we'll we'll see if I can just show you what I mean. Even when you go to fill it, like this is a fairly big tipped bottle, but um, you go to fill it, and if you get a little bit overzealous, see what I've done there is I've managed to get the liquid to block across the fill, and then the bubbles just popped because the liquids ran down, and then I can um, go and fill it again. But I kind of got to put on an angle, and yeah. Just w <laughs> yeah, try to be careful with it. Oh, it is full now, and then of course you squash the plug back in, and there's always some liquid left over. So yeah, um, as far as usability, eh, you know, dripped, well, dripped liquid everywhere now. 
and that's um, that's a pain if you're filling the tank when you're not at home and you don't have tissues and you can't wash your hands because sticky e-liquid on your on your hands just sucks so yeah I'm happy with the tank apart from that the filling which is I don't know it's getting close to a deal breaker and that's um that's a bit unfortunate because if if there's a deal breaker with the way you use a tank and it's a deal breaker for the whole device and which is a shame because I mean it's a lovely little device it's it's just a lovely, sleek, nicely designed. It's not too busy. It um, fits in the hand really nicely. It's got a good weight to it. Um, I, I just, I really like this style. Um, but that's just uh, my sort of thing. Maybe you like flashy, flashy mods, like um, different colors and LEDs and stuff like that. I like something a little bit more understated. I reckon that's cool. One other thing I should mention is the, the way to change the coils. Now let's see if this is true, because I haven't tried this with a full tank yet. Supposedly you can change this coil with a completely full tank. So there's a mark on the drip tip here. You turn the drip tip, little arrow, around to the unlock, and then you actually push in and it pops your coil up. Now as it does that, it moves a metal piece inside that seals off the liquid flow into the coil area so it should stop any liquid coming out so yeah I mean that's worked that's a completely full tank so that's done pretty well and mesh coil still looking pretty decent I'm using the um, 0.2 mesh 45 to 60 watt and I can just pop him straight back in and as you press it down it pops a drip tip back out turn it around to lock and um, happy days so that's really cool and like I see how, why they've had to use that rubber fill plug because it's just you know you wouldn't be able to do this whole system like how they've done it without having it fill on the bottom because then it would be all it would be all goofy how they'd make that mechanism work yeah it's just how it's turned out but I, I mean I think it's a really nice little compact uh, well designed solution for what they were trying to do with the the coils that you can easily pop out, use the GTX base coil so they're not a screw in and have it be able to um, change coils while you've got a full tank. So I mean they are good, that's good, that's like just if this fill was a bit, oh, I don't know, a bit bigger or had a second plug so it could push the liquid through without air locking or something, it's just not, it's not great that fill. And um, I don't know, long term I just see if it, I either get used to it or it drives me nuts. Another thing I was going to mention, it's really easy to tip over. It's pretty, um, pretty not top heavy, but there's not a whole lot of base for it to sit on. So it does like to fall over. Um, just got to be a little bit, a little bit careful, a little bit mindful that when you set it down, you kind of make sure it's sitting on its base or it's, it's going to go A over T. I want to pull it apart, see what's inside it because there's really not that much content like that, <laughs> I find, for the vape stuff we use. And um, purpose of pulling it apart, firstly, to have a look inside it. As I say, if you've seen one of the other videos, say it's like with every device. want to have a look inside it, see how it's made. Look for things like um, how good the board looks, uh, wiring if it's neat, soldered well, uh, what materials you use inside, um, protection around battery terminals, liquid ingress points. So if there's any, you know, any rubber membrane stopping liquid from getting in around the buttons or anything like that. Um, yeah, and while we've got it apart, and then that gives me access to all the wiring, which means I can get onto the board output wiring and the input wiring from the battery so that I can connect up all my Arduino stuff and um, do a full charging analysis, see, you know, what voltage it charges to, how fast it charges, how... Um, how good the efficiency is uh, I can check how hot it's getting and then for the output we can see if it's actually doing the wattages it says now I've had a little bit of an issue with the last couple of vapor so devices I've looked at uh, like the Lux PM40 that guy there the, the output voltage is too low so they don't have a boost converter in them now that just means the output voltage has to be always lower than the input voltage from the cell 
So being a single cell, you're looking at, I mean, fully charges 4.2, but you'll never see that at the output because it'll sag when you put it under load. And there's some loss through the board as well. It can never put out exactly what the battery is putting in. So even at light load, you're going to be looking at maximum of, say, 4 volts. Now, if you've got a 0.6 or a 0.8 coil that comes with these guys, with this guy, you just can't get enough wattage out of it. You don't have a high enough voltage to drive the current to get the wattage. So this is underpowered. The maximum you can get out of this with the 0.6 coil was 27 watts. And that's not even the, the um, maximum of that coil was a 20 to 30 watt coil. So you, you couldn't even get that. And that was with a full charge. When it dropped down to low charge, it was about 18 watts. So not even the minimum rating of the coil. And that's with it set to 40. It wouldn't matter because it, it just can't put out any more voltage. So I want to check for that. I've got a sneaking suspicion um, this might be the same where it doesn't have a boost capable converter. It's going to be buck only or step down only. And that means we might find it being a bit limited on power. Like you'll, you'll set it to... I don't know, you could be sending it to 50 or 60 watts and you, you're not getting it. You just might be getting like 40 or 45, uh, whatever it can drive into that coil. But the benefit with this guy, at least, is that you can get the lower resistance coils. You can get a 0.2 is like what I'm running. So it's much easier. You don't need as much voltage because the res resistance is so much lower. You don't need as much voltage to get that current so you can get the wattage. So we'll see. We'll see. But since um, I'll have the board out, I can get in and have a look. What is the maximum voltage? What's the maximum current this can put out? Um, is it going to meet what it says? 80 watts. We'll see if we can get the lowest ohm coil. So we've got the whole range of GTX coils that VaporSO sent me. Thank you. Uh, we'll get the lowest coil. We'll see if we can get 80 watts into one of them. And oh, other bits and pieces. Standby current. We'll see. Make sure it's not draining the battery when it's not being used or when it's just on standby and we'll see what it discharges the cell down to for a low battery cutout yeah so yeah if you haven't seen one of these before it's all the technical stuff I want to get in there and just just see how how good they are because there's a wide range of differences between devices you know and some of these things are like deal breakers as i'm saying if you were expecting to get 40 watts out of this guy and you, you thought you'd have a nice strong 40 watt vape you won't get it and you wouldn't know otherwise because you'd be vaping it and just thinking, geez, this is a bit weak, but it does say 40. But no, without testing it, you're not going to know stuff like that. So I think there's a, there's a good reason to do it. I, I want to find out. But anyway, I'll start pulling it apart. That's enough talking. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> the magic sound. Magic sound. Yeah. Well, adhesive... And one, two, three, four, five, six, nine, ten clips. Yep. Okay, so that's not going to fall off anytime soon. Oh, I didn't completely stuff it. I mean, I didn't need to take the leather thing off, but. Yep. Okay. Um. Wow, that's tripped out. Let's see if that's coming up on camera. Yeah, you turn it around and you can see pretty much straight through. I mean, it's like it's dark tinted, but you can see through that area. <laughs> wow. And then on that side, I mean, you can sort of just see through it now, but that's just because it's, you know, because there's um, more light behind it. I mean, like it's supposed to, so when it's dark... You can't see through the hat. It's pretty tripped out. But it's way easier to look through from the other side. So I'm just noticing it's got a little bead of white sealant there, which is a nice touch. Like those gaps were pretty tight. I think it'd kind of struggle for liquid to get through there anyway. But if it's gonna come from anywhere, it'll be obviously from the tank and maybe leaking at that airflow or whatever if you spill it on top. And um, there is a little bit of sealant 
so that's good. Happy, always happy to see sealant. I mean, I've, I got sent a box of dead mods from a shop that will remain nameless. Thank you very much, by the way. It was super, super generous um, to get this box of mods. But basically, it was so I could investigate why all these mods were dying. You know, just just as a cause of failure, go through and um, see if we could find out anything interesting to help people. And um, well, basically, all the ones I took apart are just just liquid damage. They just had just dead boards in them because they're all corroded and disgusting from being filled up with liquid. People just dumping liquid all over their devices. And um, they just weren't interesting videos at all because it was just the same thing. I just take a device apart. Okay, let's see what made this one fail. What's what interesting thing? And then it's just full of juice. And you're like, well, yeah. So it's just juice <laughs> again. So um, I must have done about five videos. And I think I didn't really post any except for the um, Geek Vape Nova. wasn't wasn't a liquid. It was uh, just a dead on arrival blown uh, solder balls were all over the board left over from the um, wave soldering or the replay or whatever they do it um, yeah but all the others liquid damaged so yeah I know liquid really does kill a lot of devices and anytime they can put some sealant in there and just think about when people use it there's always going to be liquid ar around them what's going to happen when they spill it where's it going to go and try to prevent that now, I have no idea why there's just a random hole in the plastic around the battery compartment. I mean, I guess venting. Sort of. Yeah, the bottom contact area is fairly well sealed off. Like, they've got some holes here, which not next to the battery, and I don't see any gaps down near the positive contact. I mean, if it's going to vent, it's going to be at this end because that's the positive end. But, you know, there's always a gap in between. So, for the battery vents, basically, we're trying to prevent a build up of pressure in the device. We don't want it completely tightly enclosed because that just makes it even more of a violent explosion if, it, if a battery were to vent or, you know, go into runaway or something catastrophic like that. So maybe maybe that's that's sort of a venting thing, because yeah, there's no gap down the bottom there, and those vents there aren't really going to do anything, because they're not near the battery anyway. All right, so we'll take off this little plastic frame piece here. Um, that's quite nice. That's got yeah, that's some interesting detail. So that's a, a little rubber gasket there, a silicon. That's an interesting little guy. That's a purpose-made little silicon gasket to sit on that frame. For what purpose? It's not going to stop ingress if it's already in there. I don't know, it seems like a bit of overkill actually. <laughs> no, it's not really sealing. Um, because liquid can't go in through there because it's covered anyway by the outer plate. I'm not entirely sure why there is a, why they've gone to the trouble of making a little gasket there, but, I mean, that is cool. It'd stop it rattling, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it'd, yeah, stop it rattling. It's got four, four screws in it anyway, but, wouldn't, yeah, stop it sort of creaking or rattling or anything like that, I guess. So there's the board. What have we got? Positive... So they're nice short connections. We have the positive cell, positive battery from the board to the contact in there. There is a negative, a whole lot of quite hard compound in there that's over the over the pins. Because you'd have to seal those because there is going to be liquid in there because there's um there's going to be condensation especially and the pins being moving you know there's always going to be a pathway for liquid to get through so they've sealed it from the bottom quite comprehensively but i'll take we'll get the board out because yeah it's nice and neat so far we'll get the board out and have a closer look
pretty clean looking board. You can see this component here. What it is, that's got some sealant on it. Get out, Ant. What? Get out. Yeah, I'm wondering why are there ants on my workbench? There's no food here. Just fire up the soldering iron and get these two connections off. And I'm thinking this might be a case ground. Might be a case grounded device. Well, yeah, it's, it's got to be. Yeah, of course, because it goes through the cap. Yeah, so there's a negative. They really commonly use um, zinc cases, zinc for the, the casting metal. I was just thinking, I mean, this is your battery contact for your negative, so it's got to be conductive. I mean, it's it's been working, so it's got to be conductive, but I was thinking it's not a good idea if they did leave some coating on there. It's a bit, bit of a funny finish in there. Hmm, it might be something to think about if you had battery issues or it was sagging a lot under load, like you go to use it and it goes from full to battery battery low warning really quick. Um, like really, Ant, what are you doing? Why are you here? Yeet. These were nicely soldered because these have got to be hand soldered when, the, when it's assembled. A nice shiny solder on there, not overheated, um, not dry. There was a good amount of solder. Yeah, that's a silicon jacket wire as well, which will be quite heat resistant. And I can prove that because I can put my hot soldering iron on it and it won't melt it. It'll leave a little mark, but nah, barely. So that's good high temp wire. Um, it's still pretty thin, but it's only, it is 80 watt, but short runs. And Vaporizer used such thin wires lately that the wires on the Lux PM40 were so small, like 22, 24 gauge, if that. And they're a little bit, yeah, they're kind of on the small side, but you know, it's not a, not a 200 watt device. Okay, and there's not a little seal in there. There's a whole lot of empty space. Weird. <laughs> okay. Um, so button. Gonna fall out. Another little silicon gasket sitting there. Just to sandwich the board in place and give it some cushioning, I guess. The board is screwed down. So how many screws does that have in it? Well, I guess. Oh, yeah, because it would have had these long guys go through some of these. Yeah. So the board has a lot of retention, which is good. Very good to see. And, and this silicon gasket guy here. But it's funny that there's just a... You don't often see that. It's just a compartment. You could smuggle <laughs> some something in there. <laughs> well, if you're in Australia, I mean, you could smuggle your nicotine in there because you're not allowed it. Bastards. Um, yeah, a funny little just empty compartment that's got nothing in it, and it's yeah, it's just like a <laughs> little little void of nothingness in there. So this guy here is actually your battery negative. So this is a solder point to go onto the case. So you, I'll I can check it. But we'll find that that guy there will have continuity to the case metal which then will have continuity to the, the cap and the um, through the threads and to the negative of the cell. Because, I mean, first of all, it says B negative. Uh, second, these are, these are the two output wires and they go to the pins for the atomizer, which technically, yeah, they, they wouldn't even really need to insulate that or even run another wire because they could have that just connected to ground and then it could be common through the board. But, uh, yep. Yep, that's all right, that's looking pretty good. Like it's all retained really well and there's a pretty comprehensive plastic molding in here keeping everything in place. It's a nice solid weighty frame. There's plenty of metal in here. Like that's all kind of solid through there. Uh, that's probably why it's quite top heavy. 
Yeah, because that's all... See the thickness of that area? That's solid solid metal, or I'm going to say a zinc alloy. And then it's it's pretty thin down the bottom. So that's why it's um, pretty top-heavy. Um, but no, it looks, looks quite good inside. Yeah, there's, there's definitely a coating on the back of the board, which is really good to see. More protection from liquid ingress. Um, these look pretty well... Yeah, pretty well sealed. Well, it's, it's hard compound. That's just... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think much liquid would get through there. What do you guys reckon? It sort of doesn't... The liquid doesn't seem to accumulate right around the pins. It sort of comes around the edge there where the um, airflow is. So it's like it's a good idea to give that wipe out every time you give it a fill. If you've got a tissue handy, give it a wipe out just so there's not juice just pooling in there. Because, you know, it might... At some point it might just start to work its way down through and if it does a little Houdini routine past the sealant, maybe right at the back there. Oh, Nick, off! More. What the hell is going on with bugs tonight? <laughs> Get out! Because um, they've soldered them. They would have soldered them onto the pins and then kind of had a little tube or something and applied that, that goo there. But around at the back, it hasn't... you can't really get it all the way around the back so I can see a bit of a gap there where there's um I haven't quite got all this got this sealing compound all the way at the back so it could happen that liquid could eventually start to work its way down through there through this pin there's a little there'll be you know there's got to be a little gap where the where the pin's springy don't have juice pooling up in there and ignore it because like it's grotty anyway so clean it out if there's liquid in there There's the USB-C socket, and that's the arrangement I prefer, where it's got four attachment points, the physical attachment points, not the pins. Oh, this moth, I tell you what, get out. It's only a little tiny guy, but yeah. So that's the type I prefer with the four attachments. So that should be fairly strong to, um, to wiggling and you know physical physical attachment to the board should be decent it looks like it's going to have a switch mode converter for the charging circuit because that is a small inductor and a capacitor and probably a diode so that'll be like a little little regulator section for the charging function to drop the 5 volts down to a maximum of 4.2 volts for charging there's one would assume a MOSFET it's a little bit weird. I'm not seeing any big inductors for the actual output converter. It's a very com compact board. There's really not much on here. Like even on this backside, there's bugger all components. There's just a few little bits and pieces. Yeah, one MOSFET, probably another couple of little single MOSFETs or whatever else they've got going on there. Might have another another converter rail to run all the microcontroller. So I would say the microcontroller's got to be on the on the front here under the screen. Now the screen's a typical arrangement. What they do is where they um they've got pegs. The LCD itself, the glass piece sits in in a plastic frame, and the plastic frame's got these little pegs on it. The pegs go through and they they melt them onto the board. So I think they can do that ultrasonically, or someone could come along with a little, basically like the end of a soldering iron and just kind of smush them over, hot soldering iron, and that retains the screen from flapping around, just, just keeps it onto the board. Of course I'm just going to pop that off because I want to see what's underneath. And uh, it's all going to get sandwiched back in, so it's not a huge deal, just got to be real careful, because this will stuff your day. The ribbon, the screen ribbon, is directly soldered onto the board, so there's no connector that you can unplug. And they're super delicate. If you stuff around with them too much, they'll just break off. So that's that guy there, directly soldered. So that's a bit interesting. That looks like another MOSFET there. 
It's definitely yeah, definitely got coatings on it. It's got the little sealing compounds because I can I can see it's quite shiny. So that'll be the microcontroller. So that's what's running the screen and um, yeah, doing all the mod functions. The, as I always say, the brain of the operation would be this guy. MOSFET. MOSFET. There's no inductor. I can't see a big inductor anywhere. A couple other bits and pieces down the bottom there. We might be dealing with... Uh, this might be PWM. That's quite interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's a very sparse board, isn't it? Even on this side, there's there's not much. In your main microcontroller and... Yeah, I mean, tiny little, tiny, tiny little passives here. A little diode, a couple of resistors, capacitors, whatnot. A bit bigger stuff on that side, which could be the charging controller. It's probably a little standalone. I would say it would be that guy there. Probably the charge controller. And that'd be operating that, that switch mode conversion circuit for the charging. And it'll be talking to the main microcontroller. Um, which then goes and displays you know, all the battery information charge level on the screen and the fact that it's charging. Um, so there'll be a few bits and pieces to run him and set set a few things. I, often these charging controllers, you actually you can set what current you want them to run at um, with external resistors and often they'll need like little bypass caps and a few other a few other things like that in the circuit. But yeah, there's no there's no main inductor. So when I talk about main inductor, this is a sort of arrangement you normally see with a switch mode converter, where you have one big inductor, you have some MOSFETs, and then some capac capacitors, and they form a um, switch mode converter. So either you can't really tell, but it could be buck or boost. It could be step down or, or capable of stepping down and stepping up. In the case of uh, this guy, because there's no inductors, it would lead me to believe that it's probably a PWM output, which means well, then it definitely can't be step up because you can't step up with PWM. Pulse width modulation, I'm sure I've explained this before, but all it is is just taking it straight DC voltage, like what you get out of a battery, and you're just switching it on and off, is all you're doing. So the levels are still still the same, the peaks are still the same. Draw that like that, so the peaks are still at battery voltage, but what you do is you just make the how long it's switched on for skinnier. And that just gives you a lower average voltage, and lower average power, and um, it's really simple. It's really efficient because there's there's the only, the only losses through the MOSFET. And if you've got a good low RDS, um, RDS on, which is basically the resistance through the MOSFET when it's switched on, if you've got a really low uh, low RDS on, then there's there's very little loss because the um, you know they're, they're into sort of milli ohms. And um, yeah, they're simple to simple to implement. There's just stuff all components because literally all you need is like one or two MOSFETs something to control it and you're good as gold there's there's not a whole lot of stuff going on and you don't have to filter it you just put those pulses straight to the coil and you, you're good um, and these bugs are driving me absolutely nuts where are you coming from this is a different guy I'm never a big fan of these switches that are mounted sideways on a board because you, you're pressing them that way and they're generally not that strong that way on the mounting but Vapor SO seems to do that a bit. They did that in the um, Revenger. And it was on its own little board that came off the main board. And it just had solder points holding it to the board, which is not normally very good for, for taking physical load. But I don't know. It didn't seem like many of them broke. I didn't see any reports in the forum. So it must have been all right. Mine survived, and I treated that pretty badly. Um, yeah, probably okay. Um yeah, just two sort of physical attachment points. I mean, they they're pretty stubby little guys, so they're not they're not they're you know, not super thin and easy to knock over. So I think they should be okay. I think that's about all I've got to show for the dismantle. 
make sure you can get a good look at that. Make sure you can get a good look at that board. Might zoom him in a little bit. Yeah, you can see a bit of the coating there. And flip him over. There's the screen. Alrighties, well, that just about does it. It's not not a completely lost cause. I think I can actually get that back together. <laughs> I didn't, didn't ruin it too badly. That's a plus. Alright, thanks for watching. <laughs> See you guys.